I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this Cisco certification video practice exam on pings and things. And pings just seem so innocent and so simple, and we send them all the time, and we tend not to think about it. But for both the exams, CCNA and CCNP, and real-world troubleshooting, you need to know your options with pings as well. And I'm going to show you some of those here in just a few minutes. As usual with the video practice exams, we're going to go through the questions at a pretty good clip. Feel free to pause the video if you need to. And then I'll bring up a pod of Cisco routers on the screen and we'll see the answers in action live. Also want to invite you out to the blog, the bryantadvantage.blogspot.com. We've got free questions out there every day, tutorials, all kinds of great stuff. And as we're coming up to the launching of our new video site, our new on-demand site, we're going to have all our YouTube videos there as well, uh, better organized. I know sometimes when there are so many videos on YouTube, and we've got over a hundred now, it's hard to find exactly what you want, so we're going to have them organized on the new site by protocol uh, and by feature, like if you just want to take all the video practice exams. So I invite you out the, to the blog to look out for that, and let's dive into the questions here. First, is there a difference in the privilege level that's required to run a regular ping against an extended ping? And if so, what is that difference? And if you don't even know what an extended ping is, that's fine because you're going to learn what that is in just a few minutes. Question two, what keystroke will terminate either kind of ping? Definitely need to know this for the real world and I'll show you why here shortly. Here's another one you definitely want to know for the real world. What keystroke will terminate a trace route? Because let's just say, and I'm not saying this ever happened to me, but you put in a trace route and you mistype the IP address and you're not going to get a return, you better know how to terminate that trace route. You're going to be sitting there for a while. And then finally, and I'll take answers for the real world or for a home lab here, but give two reasons that you would use an extended ping over a regular ping. Well, some interesting pinging questions there. Let's bring up the pod and I'm going to go back to user exec mode because here this is the mode we have to work from sometimes. And let's say that I want to ping an address from here and I'm going to ping an address that I know I can hit. Am I going to have any trouble with this? No. Not going to have any trouble sending a regular ping from user exec mode. Now every once in a while we get so used to working in enable mode that it's hard to remember you know that we're not always in enable mode and I've done this before maybe this trips you up where you want to send an extended ping and to do that you just type in the word ping and hit enter and I'd get incomplete command I'm like, what how did I get an incomplete command here then you use iOS help to see your options and it shows you the options that you would expect but you don't see anything there about extended and the command to start an extended ping is just the word ping with no IP address behind it but notice there's no CR here. There's no carriage return that indicates that this is a legal command by itself. What you've got to do is you've got to be in enable mode and you knew that because I was giving you a lot of hints there but that's what you need to do. You've got to be in enable mode and then hit enter and you'll be prompted with a series of questions. And I'm going to go ahead and get out of that one, but we'll come back to an extended ping in just a moment. And I'll show you more of those options. What keystroke will terminate either kind of ping or a trace route? I'm going to illustrate that for you in just a moment. Actually, we'll do the trace route now. And what I'll do is run a trace route to an address that I know I can't hit from this router. And notice you do get that helpful message, type escape sequence to abort, but it doesn't tell you what the escape sequence is. So we're going to find that out in just a second. I'm going to let the asterisk start popping up because if you have an address that's absolutely totally untraceable from here, there's not an entry in the routing table or anything, you'll start getting these rows as we would expect, but you just get, you just get asterisks all the way across for all 30 rows. And you don't want anybody looking over your shoulder after about the fifth row saying, is this supposed to be doing that? You know, and you're sitting there thinking, I wish I knew what that escape sequence was. Let me show you what that is. Do you see that? Can't see it, I admit. But it is Control-Shift-6 twice. Just once right after the other. Control-Shift-6, Control-Shift-6. And that will terminate your pings as well. We'll practice that in just a moment, but again, Control-Shift-6 twice will terminate any ping and it will also terminate your trace route. 
give at least two reasons that we would use an extended ping. Let's, look, let's go through here and look at the options because there are plenty of reasons you would do those. First off, it's going to prompt you for the protocol you want to ping. Remember that in the brackets, that's your default answer. So we're going to take the default there. We'll ping an address that we know we can hit. But here's one reason if you wanted to change the default count of five. And you may actually have times when you're troubleshooting a real world network or you're working in a home lab where you want to send a larger series of pings. You can also use these pings to simulate a multicast stream. And for UNP candidates, that's a great thing to know how to do. You can simulate a multicast stream with a ping stream. So let's just say I'm going to send a thousand pings out. You can also change the default size of the datagram. You know what that is. You can change the timeout in seconds. We're going to keep the default there, but you could do that. I'm going to show you the extended commands, and here's where you can change the source address or interface of the pings. Uh, these others you'll probably use very rarely, but it's good to know they're there. You can change the TOS. You can set the don't fragment bit in the IP header whether you want to validate your reply data. Again, voice, uh, the data pattern, sweep range of sizes, not terribly common. But notice as soon as I'm done there, it started sending all those pings. So I'm going to go ahead and terminate that. And that's exactly how you do it. Again, control shift six twice will terminate that. But if for any of those reasons, really, if you want to send more than five pings at a time, if you want to change the datagram size, if you want to change the timeout, those can really come in handy when you're troubleshooting. Because I don't like to troubleshoot something and then say, wait a minute, let me see if it's working now. And then I'll change it again, change something else, and wait a minute, let me see if it's working now. You might want to send a ping stream out and just maybe even make them smaller and space them out by changing that timeout value. Uh, and again, for home lab work, it's fantastic as far as simulating a multicast stream for UNP candidates. Multicasting is not on the NA at present, but I expect it to be there one day, and it's a good idea for your home lab to know how to do that. You just do it with an extended ping. It's just that simple. Hope you enjoyed today's video practice exam, whether you're on YouTube or my website, my blog, or one of the other video sharing sites that keeps all our videos. Uh, we've got plenty more on there, over 100. And again, come on out to the blog and the main website and see us. We've got plenty for you there as well. Again, thanks for taking your time to watch this video. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933.